number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 932,698. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 12,617. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 4,835, with total confirmed deaths at 103. We anticipate those numbers to change as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, January 11th. The Paycheck Protection Program reopened today, offering a glimmer of hope for small business owners and nonprofits struggling to survive financially through this pandemic. According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, applications are being accepted for forgivable loans to small businesses once again, with some revamped rules aimed at helping those most in need and weeding out fraud and abuse. Congress authorized up to $284 billion toward the Small Business Loan Program as part of the COVID-19 Relief Act that went into effect at the end of 2020. This would be the Small Business Administration and the Treasury Department's third round of the Paycheck Protection Program. Plans include staggering the reopening with initially working with only financial institutions, including banks and credit unions, that lend in low-income communities, as well as to minority and women-owned businesses. Then beginning Wednesday, they will begin offering second PPP loans to qualifying businesses. Companies seeking a second loan must meet certain qualifications, including having no more than 300 employees and experiencing at least a 25% reduction in gross receipts in a quarter between 2019 and 2020. The Relief Act included additional aid in the form of tax deductibility for expenses covered by PPP, as well as tax credit for firms that keep their employees on payroll and simplified forgiveness for loans under $150,000. To date, the PPP has distributed $525 billion through more than 5 million loans. The U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams went online this morning to host a Q&A session with members of the public on questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. Some of the questions included, quote, if you already have COVID-19, should you still take the vaccine or is it unnecessary? Can I still spread COVID-19 to others if I'm vaccinated? Will a booster be needed a few months after receiving the vaccine? These were just some of the many questions asked today. You can follow the thread on Twitter at Surgeon underscore General to hear how he answered. Adams also reminded the public that small preventative actions could bring meaningful change and shift the direction of the pandemic, like washing hands, wearing a mask, watching your distance with others, getting tested if symptomatic, and getting the vaccine. Los Angeles County officials held a press briefing this afternoon to give updates on the county's response to the coronavirus. Dr. Barbara Ferrer says January will be a critical month for action, sharing that every eight minutes, someone is dying of COVID-19. She says that there are outbreaks everywhere, from airports to workplaces to retail stores, schools, and fitness centers. Everyone is urged to avoid gatherings and shop for essential items at off hours when it's not busy. Avoid visiting others, wear a face covering in your home if you have an elderly family member or live with anyone with underlying health conditions. While the rollout of vaccinations does offer hope, all it takes is one mistake and the deadly virus continues to spread at alarming rates. Today, an additional 137 new deaths were reported with more than 12,000 new COVID-19 cases confirmed. Dr. Ferrer shared some startling charts and graphs showing the steep incline in the spread of this virus over the course of 10 months. 
In the past two months alone, the county is seeing an 898% increase in cases, 884% increase in hospitalizations, and a 1,125% increase in the number of daily deaths reported. So far, more than 5 million people have been tested with 18% testing positive. Ferrer says the best way to stop the spread of the virus is to simply avoid interactions with others. Health officials also say to brace for another surge in COVID-19 cases as we approach the two-week mark since the last major holiday where many people traveled and visited with family and friends. As people start to show symptoms from getting ill over the New Year's holiday, Los Angeles County is expected to see another week of soaring COVID-19 daily case counts with close to 20,000 reported last week in a single day, one of the highest during the pandemic. Officials say about one in five people tested for COVID-19 countywide are testing positive with upwards of 200 daily COVID-related deaths reported this last week. Currently, there are more than 8,000 people in LA County hospitals with the virus as many institutions are struggling to keep up with the influx in new patients. The public health department recommends those who test positive or have symptoms to isolate. Symptoms could include fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, runny or stuffy nose, muscle aches, headache, sore throat, nausea, diarrhea, or loss of taste or smell. And those who should seek immediate emergency medical attention is anyone experiencing trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, confusion, inability to stay awake, as well as bluish lips or face. The Los Angeles County Department of Health Services announced Sunday it will discontinue the use of curative COVID-19 PCR tests at its drive-up testing sites after a significant amount of false negatives were reported. After reviewing data that prompted the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to recently create an alert regarding the possibility of false negative results, the county has already removed the use of this test. The curative test provided a limited number of tests at county-supported pop-up testing sites beginning mid-December. Tests were administered between December 13th through January 2nd, with a total of more than 24,000 curative tests completed. It attributed to about 10% of all COVID-19 tests administered at county-supported testing sites during that time period. The Department of Health Services did say all COVID-19 tests have a risk of false negative results. While there is no real reliable way to detect early infection, meaning that infections often spread before symptoms have time to develop, health officials continue to reiterate their recommendations, which are to avoid gatherings, wear face masks that cover the nose and mouth, and stay home unless it's for essential activities. The country's largest COVID-19 testing site will now shift gears with the vaccine here. Dodger Stadium will stop testing for the virus and instead focus on creating a massive vaccination site to serve the community. Testing operations at the stadium will end today and will soon be converted to be able to administer 12,000 vaccinations per day beginning at the end of this week scaling up to that goal amount when it's fully operational. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti says, quote, vaccines are the surest route to defeating this virus and charting a course to recovery. So the city, the county, and our entire team are putting our best resources on the field to get Angelinos vaccinated as quickly, safely, and efficiently as possible. End quote. City officials acknowledge that closing the site will reduce the overall testing capability in the region, but in return will triple the vaccine distribution. Dodger Stadium opened in May for COVID-19 testing, and since, more than a million tests have been administered. 
Grocery train Ralph's is now administering free COVID-19 vaccinations to its pharmacists and staff, along with other health care providers at its 50 pharmacies in Los Angeles and Riverside counties. The Moderna vaccinations are currently available to those who are eligible as part of the first tier of phase 1A of county public health COVID-19 vaccine distribution phases. Now, those looking to get the vaccine will be required to complete a disclosure form declaring they are eligible for the phase 1A distribution. Frontline grocery employees will be part of the phase 1B distribution, and the grocery chain says the vaccine will be rolled out to all 77 Ralph's pharmacies throughout Southern California and the Central Coast as soon as it becomes available through local health departments. Hoping to offer some relief to Southern California's strained health care system, medical troops have arrived at several hospitals in Los Angeles and Riverside counties. The Department of Defense is expected to send about 150 members of the military to support medical centers where the spread of the virus has overwhelmed hospitals beyond its capacity. Medical troops mostly consist of Air Force nurses and Army medics. On Sunday, L.A. County reported more than 14,000 new cases of COVID-19 with 166 additional deaths. Currently, there are close to 8,000 people hospitalized with the coronavirus in the county, with 22% of those patients in the intensive care unit. In an effort to assist the county's growing number of COVID-19 related deaths, the state's Office of Emergency Service implemented two new mutual aid plans to help. Just since Thursday, more than 3,500 new deaths were reported in Los Angeles County, putting a strain on the county's morgue. To help, the state plans to distribute 88 refrigerated trailers to serve as temporary places to hold the bodies. Already 10 53-foot mobile morgues have been set up outside the Los Angeles County Coroner's Building, while others are being sent to San Bernardino, Imperial, Sonoma, and Monterey counties. Due to the surge, the county coroners have been forced to hold on to the bodies until they can be sent to mortuaries, which have also been overwhelmed, especially for those seeking proper burial services. Cal OES says since the trailers have not been designed to be used as morgues, they are providing shelving to double each trailer's capacity. They're also distributing body bags and the necessary protective equipment for personnel to handle the bodies. One organization is pleading with those who have fully recovered from COVID-19 to consider donating blood. Throughout the country, more than 250,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported over the weekend. And the American Red Cross says they are experiencing a shortage of convalescent plasma donations. Now, the plasma in your blood may contain COVID-19 antibodies that can attack the virus and help those currently battling it to recover faster. If you're fully recovered from COVID-19, you're encouraged to find out if you qualify to donate convalescent plasma. You must be at least 17 years old and weigh at least 110 pounds in good health and have a prior verified diagnosis of COVID-19 and now symptom free. For those who are fully recovered and are ready to help other patients, you can go online to redcrossblood.org slash donate. The Torrance Unified School District Board of Education held a special meeting over the weekend to discuss how to move forward during this surge. The virtual meeting held on Saturday late afternoon included discussions on how the district should proceed related to the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health's recommendation to maximize online and remote learning until at least February 1st due to the ongoing surge. There have been 114 transitional kindergarten students on campus between the morning and afternoon classes along with 300 excuse me, 732 kindergarten students with both grades returning early December and 789 first graders returning on campus just last Monday. 
Torrance School Board members did vote to follow the county's recommendations and put a pause on bringing students back on campus until at least February 1st. Board members say they will reassess the situation again next week. While some students were only back in class for a week, all students resumed virtual learning today. You can find district updates on their website at TUSD.org and follow them on social media. Well, thanks to the school district's nutrition services division, breakfast and lunch continues to be available to all kids and teens 18 and under. The free meals were extended to families until June 30th of this year. And while meals are currently available to pick up at all campuses, beginning February 1st, bulk meals will be available only on Mondays and Thursdays from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. at middle and high school campuses in Torrance and will no longer be available to pick up at elementary schools. Early morning pickups are still available at all the high schools on Mondays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. as well. Now on Mondays, three days worth of meals will be available and on Thursday, four days worth of meals will be offered. You can check out the district website to get the closest middle or high school campus near you and to check out their meal menus. The Torrance Public Library continues to offer new virtual programs to keep the community safer at home and busy with fun activities. Today, a unique selection of crafting kits were made ready to pick up and make with your family. These fun activities are recommended for school-aged youth. Then on Friday, hear from Jamie Novak as the popular author and decluttering humorist shares her tips for clearing clutter and how to decide what stays and what goes. This will be available on Zoom on Friday at 10.30 a.m. Then in two weeks, the library is creating a unique selection of crafting kits designed for adults to discover their creative side. Craft kits will be available to pick up on Tuesday, January 19th from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. at all library branches. To learn more, go to library.torrentca.gov. A familiar face returns to the Torrance Police Department this week. Former Torrance Deputy Chief John McGeff, who retired last year after a 33-year career in law enforcement, was hired back in a temporary capacity to lead the department until the city officially hires a new police chief. He was brought back mid-December prior to Police Chief Eve Berg's last day, which was on Friday to ensure a smooth transition. He served under Chief Berg for two years before his retirement in September of 2020. He was sworn in last week by his wife, who serves as a Los Angeles County Superior Court judge. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we'd like to share stories from our community. Feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, one local organization continues to support not only the community, but also the artists who have been profoundly impacted by the isolation and cancellation of concerts and events. Thanks to the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation, magical events, concerts, and much more have become available by streaming online and on demand for a nominal fee. This past weekend, Joel Gain performed a studio cabaret favorite. Then this upcoming Saturday, the popular Jonathan Levitt brings his magic up close. Then on Saturday, January 23rd, you can catch the art and study of taiko drums. And in early February, the voice of Eileen Arton comes to life for a solo concert that you won't want to miss. The multi-talented singer and songwriter says she is donating 50% of her ticket sales right back to the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation to support all the great work they do in the community. Toka continues to give fans the best seat in the house until they can return to live theater and performances again. What a great way to show how much you care by sharing in fun events, distanced apart, and enjoyed safely together. If you have a great story to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov 
we'd love to hear from you. Well, that is our update for COVID-19 today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as Rihanna Trutanich brings you the latest. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.